Hello, everyone. Today we'll be conducting the tutorial for UNGT 1130, Multivariable Calculus for Engineers. Next topic will be equations of lines and planes, and also we will spend some time on vector value function. Uh, today's topic will be uh, some numerical examples on equations of lines and planes, and also will provide some graphical cases of vector value functions, and also we uh, will end with the general, generalized idea of vector value functions. And please notice that the suggested solution of homework one has just been released, so you can go to our Blackboard website and check the solution. And uh, due to current situation, uh, the TAs now might not have access to the homework one questions. Hope you can understand the situation now. Okay, now let's move to today's uh, topic. First, let's dis discuss the fans in 3D space. So uh, we can see from this graphical uh, example here, in this picture, we are describing the plan through the point P0 with a normal N, and that's all points with uh, the vector P0, P is perpendicular to the, to the normal vector N. So the mathematical definition, the strict definition will be like this. Uh, let P0 uh, be a point in R3 space with a position vector R0 writing in this way. So with these two definition here, uh, we define the normal vector n in this way. And this is a given non-zero vector. With a point uh, and a normal vector, then we can define a plane, which is a flat surface uh, passing through P0 and perpendicular to the normal vector n. So, so in the definition of the plane, there are two key elements. First is the normal vector n, which is perpendicular to the plane. And there is a point p0. So actually, the plane is a set of all points p for which p0, p is perpendicular to n. Sorry. And then we look at this uh, picture will be more clear. So we have the P0. We have the P0 here uh, at, the, at the point that the plane passing through. And we have a normal A here. And the normal n can be uh, like any vectors as long as it is perpendicular to the entire plane. And this p should be like the, uh, the set of all points that p0, p, this vector, or uh, r minus r0, if we define it in the position vector way. As long as this p0, p is perpendicular to this normal vector n, then this p here will be under the, will be in a set of all the, of the plan. Therefore, with previous definition, we can now come to the point normal equation of the plan. Since we already have, uh, since we already have the normal vector n defining this way, it's i j k here, just the unit vector in the coordinates. 
And this plan also passing through the point T0, with positional vector R0. Then uh, in our definition, it only requires that the P0, P, P0, P be perpendicular to this long vector N, which means N dot product is P0, P. To be zero. So this P zero P can also be written in the position vector way, which is just R minus R zero. So in this way, this falls in the definition of being perpendicular. So this is the vector form. Uh, equivalently, we can also write down this equation in a scalar form. So the, we just uh, do, the, do the dot product and uh, expand all the terms that will be, since n will be uh, a, b, c, and r minus uh, r zero will just be x minus x zero, y minus y zero, c minus z, c, z zero. But if we do the dot product, the equation will be just like this one. So we do a little um, modification here, and then the scalar form can be written in more simply, and the standard form, which is ax plus b1 plus cz equals d, where d will be equals to ax0, y0, and cz0. So these two equations are equivalent if you do the simple calculation here. Uh, now let's come to our first problem one. So in this problem, we try to find an equation of the plan, uh, which, so, and the plan passes through two, three points. We have P, Q, R here. P equals one minus two, zero. Q is three, one, four. And R is <coughs> zero minus one, two. So basically, we are trying to using, use three points uh, to define the plane, and we're trying to find the equation of that plane. So here is a, a, a very simple theorem that, is says, that states that three non-linear points will determine your plane uniquely. So you can imagine that in your head. Uh, According to our previous definition, if we want, if we want to uh, write down the equation of a plane, then we will need a normal vector and a point that lies in the plane. Uh, so to solve this question, we can first find the normal vector. So this reminds us that the normal vector is quite important in the definition of a plane. Um, now we are trying to first find out the normal vector. We can make use of the following two vectors from the given points. Remember that we have three points P, Q, R, and uh, by the given information in the problem, that P, Q, R forms a plane that means P, Q, R, they are all uh, in that plane. And, and you also state that uh, any line any line segment uh, formed by any two of these three points will also lie down on that plane. So we can choose two uh, simple vectors. For example, PQ, PR, they should all be in the plane as well. And we just subtract the coordinates of Q and P. And then we get the PQ equals two, three, four, and P or will equal to minus one, one, two. Since both of these vectors, they are in a plane, 
and any vector that is orthogonal. Both of these will also be orthogonal to the entire plane. Um, so it is come from the definition of a plane. Let's remember that in the definition, any vector P0, P any vector P0, P, uh, as long as the P0 and P is in the plane, they should all be, this vector P0, P should be perpendicular to the normal vector. Therefore, we have the PQ and PR, so we are trying to find a vector that is uh, uh, perpendicular or orthogonal uh, to these two vectors. So we can, And uh, I think in previous studies, we have known that uh, the, the cross product of two vectors will be orthogonal to both of these vectors. Um, therefore, you can use a cross product as a normal vector. So here we just do the simple calculation. We, define, we uh, use the normal vector equals the PQ cross product PR. We can write it in the determinant way, and we can calculate the result to be 2i minus 8j plus 5k. And now we have the normal vector here. And we can, so we can go back to the previous um, point normal equation. Uh, of the plan. In, we, we try to use the scalar form. Now, since we have the normal vector, the normal vector uh, will be ai plus dj plus ck. So we have the information of a. We also have the information of b and the information of c. So the only thing they did is, uh, is a point that is just inside this plan so that it provides us with the information of x0, y0, and z0. But since we have already have three points P, Q, R, so we are very cool here. We'll just pick any points, uh, then we can write down the equation. So here we use P as a point. So the P equals the one minus two, Zero. We just uh, put this p inside the point normal equation of the space in the scalar form. So we have uh, two i n equals two i minus eight j plus five k. So eight uh, two minus eight five here. And we also choose the point p um, one minus two zero. So minus one plus two minus zero. And do the simple calculation. We get the uh, equation of this thing. So the first problem is quite basic one. And now let's look at the second problem. <laughs> so here we try to find an equation of the plan that passes through the line of intersection of two planes. The intersection of two planes. So the two planes are x plus y minus 2j equals 6 and 2x minus 1 plus a equals 2. And it also passes through point minus 2, uh, 0, and 1. So uh, according to problem 1, we can have a very naive solution here. That is, uh, we have the, these two plans here, and then we'll try to find the line intersection so that we can have a, a line. And then we have a line and a point here that it lies in the uh, required plane. And in that line intersection, we can easily find two points. And then we have three, two points plus this point, we have three points, and then we, we are back to the problem one. We can easily solve this question. But, but 
uh, here is another uh, interesting solution here. So by, obs by observation, uh, a family of plants of plants uh, intersecting in a straight line is called a pencil of, of pencil of plants. So the picture will be like this. And here we can see in, in the picture that <coughs> the pencil of plants is determined by any two um, parallel plants in it, um, since they have a unique line intersection. So that means um, any two non-parallel plants like this, like this two, they can already uh, define uh, in top the pencil of plants. Therefore, uh, if think, let's suppose that we have already have two non-parallel plants, and they have the equation of a one x plus b one b one y plus c y j equals b one, and because we have the second plant, second non-parallel plant, in a similar way, then for any real number lambda, the equation uh, a one x plus uh, Equation one x plus b one y plus c y two z minus b one plus lambda lambda times the equation of uh, the second plan. And the entire equation plus is zero. So this equation will represent a plan in the pencil. Uh, to see this, we can easily observe that the equation is still linear. So it represents a plan. And that any point x, y, z uh, satisfying the equation uh, of both given plans uh, of the first plan and second plan, they will also satisfy this equation for any value of lambda. And you know, any plan in the pencil of plans family we can uh, give their equation simply by changing the number, the value of this lambda here. And we have, since we have the simple theorem here, we can solve the problem too in a more interesting way. So first, we have these two plans. Uh, the two plans are already defined here. And then we can write down the equation of the pencil of plans uh, using the previous simple theorem. We can write it uh, just like this. Uh, with the uh, lambda term here. So this will represent the plan and is satisfied by the coordinates of all plans on the line intersection of the given things. And also since uh, in a problem setting, we say that the plan passes through the point minus two, zero, one. So we just substitute uh, the x, y, z by real value, uh, minus two, zero, and one. And we can easily calculate the value of lambda here equals minus two. So the equation of the required plan, therefore, uh, we can Simplify this one. Simplify this question to uh, the the final result will be three z three x minus three one plus four z plus uh, 
plus two equals zero. zero. And here's a simple notice here. So this solution would not have worked if the given point was already on the second plane. And you can see about why. And the reason is quite simple. So, so numerically speaking, uh, if the if the given point here come from the second plane, so then the x y z will satisfy two x minus y plus z here uh, will satisfy this equation. So that will make this term go to zero. So the entire equation will be the first term plus name lambda times zero. And the entire equation will just reduce this to the equation of the first plan. So therefore, uh, in this way, if the given point uh, is from the second plan, then we can we cannot find this uh, equation of the plan from this solution. And so basically if the point come from the second plan and the plan required will just be the second plan and the problem will be meaningless. So this is just a simple reminder here. Now let's come to an extra problem uh, of the discussion of equation of space. So it says determine if the plan given by uh, this equation here and also a uh, line given by the vector form they are orthogonal, parallel, or neutral. So, so we can easily draw a picture here to determine the. So this is the space. Okay. So the key element in the space uh, is actually the normal vector. So we can also draw it on the normal vector. Draw the normal vector here. So this is n as the normal vector. And. Uh, we also draw the line here. Let's call this line L. So, um, so basically, if this L and the normal vector n, if they are parallel, and then, then this line and this plane will be orthogonal. And the opposite is also true. That means if this L is orthogonal to the normal vector n here, and then the line and the plane, they will be parallel. So to solve this problem, so, so then the problem is not as difficult a problem as it may appear to be at the first glance. So we can pick uh, the normal vector of the plane n. So you, you are still remember the scalar uh, equation of the polynomial uh, equation. Then we can easily get the normal vector minus one, zero, two coming from the, so this is minus x plus, uh, plus zero y plus two. Z. So we can easily get the normal vector minus one, zero, and two. Okay. And the vector that is parallel to the line will also be easy to get. So th this is actually phi plus zero t. So this will also be zero minus one, four. So we will talk about the vector form of lines uh, in more detail in the coming section. So now we want to find out whether this n and this b here they are also or, or parallel. So to determine whether this two, uh, whether they are orthogonal is quite easy. We just calculate the dot product, right? Um, the dot product of n times b will simply be calculated in this way, and then you say, hey, they are not zero, so they are not. Um, so n and b, they are not uh, orthogonal. And uh, for the cross product, I also have a quick way to calculate the cross product. 
we all know that the first product will be written in the determinant way, in the determinant form. So, so this method will only be valid if the rank equals three. So it goes like this. You copy the first two columns and paste it to find this determinant. And then you have uh, many diagonals. And, diagonal. and if the diagonals uh, are coming from top to bottom, uh, in, uh, like in this direction, then we act the product on this diagonal. The, pro the product of this diagonal uh, will be added. So this will be zero i, and this will be um, zero j, and this will be uh, positive one k. So we have the one k here, one k, and for uh, for diagonals in this direction from the bottom to top, we subtract the product on this diagonal. So this will be 0k, so this 1 minus 0. And this is, uh, this is minus 2i, but we will subtract this product, so this will become this 2i. And this is minus 4j, and we subtract the product, this will be positive 4j. And then we, we also calculate that this term is not equal to zero as well. Then we can come to the conclusion that the line and the plane, they are neither orthogonal or parallel. So to solve this problem, we also need to first determine the normal vector of the plane, and also a vector that is parallel to, the, to, the, to this line. And now let's talk about the uh, lines, the definition of lines in 3D space. So suppose, suppose that we also start from the point P0 uh, equals X0, Y0, Z0, and the point lies on the, the point uh, lines on the line here. here. And uh, we, now we have a vector B that is parallel to the line. So this bay here is also very important. So this is the V, V here, this is the line. Then we can, and uh, for the P, P0 here, uh, we, we also have the uh, position vector r0 for this p here. We also have the position vector r. Now we have all the elements. Um, so here we directly give the three forms of the equation of lines in 3D, 3D space. First is a vector, vector equation of the straight line. So this can be easily written as r equals r0 minus uh, r0 plus t times the vector b. So you can also see from the picture here, r equals r0 plus uh, the p0 p, which is r minus r0. So we can call this this part is actually r minus r0. And we, we give it equals to t. Then we have the first vector form. And we also have the scalar form of the equation line. So it also comes from the vector form. So simply you just uh, calculate the x, y, z in a separate way. It will also be x0 plus ta and y equals y0 plus t times e. 
and Z will go the similar way. So uh, if you do some modification on this uh, scalar form, and then we will come to a standard form for the equation of straight lines, it will just be like this way. Now let's discuss uh, the, the third problem. So this problem is about uh, the application of previous uh, equations on the, on the previous slide. So write down the equation of the line that passes through the points, uh, these two points, two minus one, two, three, and one, four, minus three. And we need to write down all three forms of the equation here. So remember that in in problems related to uh, science, we we always calculate the normal or find the normal vector n as well as our first step first because n the normal vector is very uh, crucial to the equation of plants. And in the equation of lines, we also do this in this way. We need the vector b here that is parallel to the line. So we have the two points here, and then two points, two points here. The vector V can simply be a vector that starts at the second point and ends at the first point. So the order here is actually that matters. The way why we choose uh, the starts at the second point and ends at the first point is because we try to reduce the sign or minus. Uh, in the final result, so it's actually little matter. So if you do a single subtraction here, you get uh, you will get the v equals uh, one minus five six. So to write down the line in vector form, we will also need a point that lies on the line. We already have two points uh, in the problem setting, so we can choose either one. So we choose the first point, and here comes the vector form of the line. Uh, it's quite simple. We just use the we will just use the uh, vector equation of the straight line. So you simply do the uh, substitution here. Uh, you substitute all the real values into the into the theorem, and you will get the final result. And uh, as long as you, you have one uh, equation, as long as you have the equation in one form, then you can uh, easily calculate the other two forms. So these are the, uh, this is the scalar form of this line, and this is a standard form of the line. So this problem is quite, it's not that difficult. You can try to uh, calculate the step by yourself after the tutorial. And uh, since we have already covered the equations of lines and uh, space, uh, we can talk, do a little exploration on the distance. So the distance is defined as between uh, two geometric objects. When we say distance, it always means the minimum distance between two points uh, and one in each object. So here we will uh, just look at the example from the textbook. The textbook uh, is from uh, calculus of complete course. So this uh, first example, we try to find the distance from a point to a plane. So find the distance from point P0 to the plane, um, AX plus BY plus CZ plus D. And the problem B is just the application of the first theorem. 
So we are trying to find the point P0, the distance is S here, distance is S to the vector, to, to this uh, fan. So based on the picture, let R0 be the position vector of, of P0 and n, of course, will be the normal vector. So let's say P1 will be the point on P that is closest to P0, and then form a P1, P0 vector. And intuitively, uh, the P1, P0 will be uh, perpendicular to P. So, it's, so it will be parallel to the normal vector, because normal vector is also perpendicular. To the plane. So the distance P, the distance will be S equals P, the norm of P1, P0. And if P have position vector R, is any point of P. So that S, we can also see from the picture here. S is also the projection of uh, P zero P. It's also the projection of P P zero, uh, and in the direction of the normal vector. So we can write down the equation like this: uh, S equals the norm of. So we are trying to find the projection in the n direction. So we do P P zero. Uh, dot product, dot product n, and divided by the dome of n. So the p p zero equals r r zero r zero minus r. So you do a simple calculation here. So this is the, uh, the vector form of the distance. Since we have uh, p equals x y z, and uh, we have the equations of space from previous discussions, we can substitute this R in here, and we can also simply calculate the R0 here. So finally, we'll get the uh, equation for the distance between a point to a space in this way. If n equals, so this A, B, C here is just the normal vector, the parameters of the normal vector n. So by using the first conclusion uh, in the problem A, in problem B, we just substitute the x0, y0, z0, um, and also the normal vector, the normal vector here. So by the scalar form of the space, the normal vector, this will be A equals T. A equals T, uh, B equals minus T, and C equals minus one. So you easily do the calculation and you'll get the final result. And there are also other two cases of distance in the, this chapter. So there are uh, distance of a point to a line and also the distance of a line to another line. So probably that you can go to the textbook and go to the chapter 10.4 and you can look at the distance of point to a line and the distance between two lines in more details. And now we will quickly go through the some uh, graphical example of quadratic uh, surfaces. So here are some very uh, 
famous examples of quadric surfaces, so like this one, elliptic, graveloid, and this hyperbolic graveloid. So if, if you encounter some equations in a form like uh, this, it, then you can check this form and find the graphical, the, the shape of the equation that is described. So now we talk about some, uh, the definition of vector functions. A vector valued function is actually the function that takes uh, one or more variables at the parameters, at the input parameters, and also returns a vector. So uh, a vector functions uh, of a single variable in R2 space will be like this one, and in R3 space will be like, like the second one. So, and uh, respectively, and the FT, GT, HT here will be called the component functions. So let's look at the, the problem four. So we will try to identify the surface that is described by the vector function here, r x y, um, plus x times i, y times j, and uh, the x squared plus two y squared, and then times k. So, so actually, we can see that this uh, this vector value function is. Uh, a function of two variables, that is, in the x and y, and this will always be the case when we are using vector functions to represent surfaces. So to identify the surface, we may go back to the parametric equations. So the first two are really uh, really simple that you can, so the first two xi and yj, you can just think that you, you're picking x and y as three variables and then determine z from our choices of these two. So the last equation uh, is the one that we want to. Then we should recognize z equals uh, x squared plus y squared is actually a function come from the section of quadric surfaces and uh, it's actually the equation of elliptic graph. Uh, it's actually an equation of the elliptic graveloid. And so the vector function also represents an elliptic graveloid. So you can simply go back to the this section here and check. So z equals uh, x squared plus y squared. This represents a elliptic parabola. Finally, let's talk about the uh, let's generalize the idea of vector value functions. So for any given function of one variable, uh, this way. And uh, it can be write down as uh, written down as a vector value form like these two rx equals xi plus fxj or or in other cases any function of two variables they can also write down a vector form of the equation so for a function of two variables the vector form will be like uh, rxy equals xi plus yj plus gxyk. So here, so this is zk. Zk here. So um, which, which do we use is actually depending on the original form of the function. For example, uh, in previous section, 
of portrait subsets into uh, the hyperbolic paraboloid uh, in equation y equals 2x squared minus 5z squared. This can be written as a following vector value function. Rxa equals xr plus uh, 2 x squared minus 5 z squared j plus z k. Uh, this is times here. So you easily substitute the y equals this equals this term, and you get the vector value function. So, um, and that's all for today's uh, tutorial. We talk about the equation of space and equation of lines, and uh, you probably want to check more uh, talk more details about the distance between lines and the point lines in the textbook. And then we talk about a little bit of the vector value function. And thank you for listening. If you have further questions, you can uh, ask questions in the online Q&A sessions. And also send email to, uh, to the TAs. Uh, I'm from the uh, SEM department of Group A. So this is my this is my email address. So you can easily find me through the email. And so this is end of this class. Thank you.